Hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, my name is Susan Sullivan. I'm a member of the admissions committee here at Columbia Business School. And uh, thank you for joining us. I am uh, joined by my colleague, Isaac Moore, who is going to be managing the Q&A box. And I am also joined by two current students for the Enba Global Program, who I'm going to have uh, introduce themselves in just a minute. Today, we're going to be giving you an overview of the Enba Global Program and the application process. So um, if you have any questions as we go through the presentation, just type them into the Q&A box. But there's a lot more of you than there are of Isaac, so be patient. Um, he may hold some of your questions till the end when we'll have a verbal Q&A. So, um, Yahida, Ashley, let's start with you, Yahida. If you could both introduce yourselves, uh, your name, a little bit about your background, you know, where you're from, where you currently live, and what you're currently doing, your company and role, and tell us when you began the program. That's a lot. Yahida, just jump in. <laughs> I'll try to remember. Um, so, Yahida, I am originally from Peru. Um, I have an engineering degree, uh, but my career has been focused in finance. So I haven't, haven't practiced engineering much. I um, have worked in three different uh, continents in five different countries um, for the two of the biggest mining companies. Um, I started the MBA in, I'll say, February, March uh, last year. Um, so we are the MBA Global 23. Um, I started in Chile, based in Chile, as the head of finance of one uh, of those two companies. And I changed jobs company and location during the program. Um, so I'm not general manager in another company um, based in the UK. Um, so that has been interesting. Um, yeah, and I chose the MBA because of that, because of the global experience and um, having the network, being able to move um, countries like houses. So yeah, that's me. I don't know if that, that's all. That's Cover perfect. All. Thanks. How about you, Ashley? Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Paxalt. Uh, I have a psychology, sociology, and a chemistry background, and I went to a school in Portland, Oregon. I'm originally from Utah, uh, so grew up in the Mountain West, and then a company, I went to Portland, went to Colorado, then headed over to New York, and have been in New York ever since. So fortunate to be in this city and very close to Columbia University, which has made this program a little bit easier for me. I'm a senior director of global go-to-market operations at LinkedIn. I've spent my entire career in tech, both from startups where I was the fourth employee to scale-ups where I was 400, all the way to a large corporation now at LinkedIn. And I'm really there to help companies enter their next growth stage. So from millions to billions, depending on where they're at. I joined uh, the program same time as Yahida last year. It's been a journey for sure. We're all looking forward to completing our studies in December and graduating in February. We're at that point of a bit of senioritis, I think. <laughs> and uh, I joined the program because, as I mentioned, I was born and raised in the United States. I work in a global organization and I run a global team. And for me, really being able to get a greater perspective, understanding knowledge and insights from different countries, regions, people, industries, was really important to me. And this is what that program was able to offer me. Great, thank you both. Oops. Okay, sorry about that. So these are the topics that we're gonna to touch on today. Uh, the benefit of our partnerships, in other words, why we created Emba Global, uh, the content of the program, the actual admissions process and fees and financial aid. I'm having trouble moving forward. Okay, uh, still here. All right, so what is EMBA Global? Well, back in the year 2000, both Columbia Business School and London Business School separately were feeling the need for a truly global executive MBA program. We wanted to create something that was more experiential, where students would spend a significant amount of time in residence in major international business hubs while still being able to maintain their career momentum. And we realized that we were really ideal partners because both schools have academically rigorous EMBA programs with strong brand recognition worldwide. And uh, the faculty at both schools are renowned thought leaders with really deep connections to top level international business communities. 
And, you know, of course, in addition to the amazing faculty, the exposure that you get to your fellow classmates, a really sophisticated, high achieving group of top performers who work in a wide variety of industries, come from every corner of the globe is what's going to make this experience special. So, you know, here's a very basic outline of the program. It takes place through five terms over 20 months and it begins in May each year. The total cost is $218,079, and students take classes in both London and New York, alternating between the two campuses. Um, Ashley and Yahida, you both mentioned very broad, rational reasons for wanting to do this program, but I'm wondering if there's one specific thing that really excited you and sort of tipped the balance for wanting to choose Emma Global. You need to go first, Ash. I'll, I'll, I'll try. Um, so for me, because I, I had been always in mining, one of my biggest um, ticking bots was having different industries. So that could be or could not be one of the, of the differentiators. But then the second one is a place where I felt comfortable with that global experience because mm -hmm. I've worked in so many different countries and in a global company. That's what I wanted to have an experience and I think that most of the other um, programs that I've seen are very focused on one country and they don't have the diversity that we have um, and I can say that's something that truly shows um, every, everyone is from different places and just having that different diversity in culture is uh, yeah it's remarkable. Great thanks. I would agree. I think for me, as mentioned, I've been in tech my entire career. And so I actively chose to pick this program where tech and marketing were not necessarily uh, the complete focus of it. I've been accepted to a few other schools where that was very much like their niche. And I decided to enter this one due to the fact that I knew I would get so such a great exposure to different industries, to different types of occupations, to different cultures and nationalities and folks. And that's why I really made sure that this was the program for me. Thank you. Yeah, that's something we really look for in admissions is having as diverse a group as we can. So let's see, going into a little more detail here, um, total courses, about half and half for an electives. Uh, courses are taught in a block week format. And what that means is roughly once a month, you'll spend about a week on one or the other of the campuses, particularly during the core courses, it's structured that way. Those first three terms are the core, where you are taught by uh, shared faculty. So when you're in New York, your London faculty flies in, so you're being taught by both, and vice versa. When you're in London, the Columbia, New York faculty flies into London. So you're really getting uh, that view from both. And then the final two terms, you're taking your elective courses, which you can choose from either school. If you want to stay in that block week format, if that's working for you, great. There's lots of electives in that time format, but you also have the opportunity to take um, other time formats. Let's say you live in New York, you want to take our Friday, Saturday courses. You have a lot of flexibility during the electives to choose your time format and location. Um, all of our students are required to do at least one international seminar, which gives you further global exposure, and a second is optional. The teaching methods, they vary. It really depends on the subject matter of the course. Uh, English is the language of instruction, though, throughout the program. You get access to the career management services at both schools, and you have lifelong access to the alumni network of both schools, which is over 97,000 alumni uh, throughout the entire world variety of industries. And then finally, you do earn two separate degrees, one from Columbia and one from London Business School. And probably one of the greatest benefits of the program is, is this truly global network that you become a part of. 
um, you know, I'm not going to read off a bunch of numbers here, but uh, it's a huge faculty across the two schools from 30 countries, and most of them have worked in multiple countries. So they really have that global viewpoint. And then after you graduate, there are over 150 alumni clubs worldwide. And I would say this program is, um, from my experience, it's a particularly close knit community. I think uh, living together during block weeks, it's sort of adult sleepaway camp, people really form strong bonds and remain very engaged uh, with each other and with the schools as alumni. And then you have that lifelong access to this amazing, enormous alumni network. So let's focus in a little bit here on the core curriculum. These are the courses that you're going to take in your first three terms. And as you can see, it's, it's all the topics you would expect to study in a business school. We want to make sure you graduate with fluency across all of the basic business functions. And the way this is structured, you are going to take all of these four courses, those first three terms, with your entire cohort. And that's generally between 50 to 70 students. So you really get to know each other well. You form lifelong bonds there. Now, what happens is within that cohort, we break it down into learning teams of roughly five to six people. And we make sure each team has a diversity of people from different countries, different industries. You're going to work together in between class weeks. So that is a bit of a challenge, figuring out how to do that because you're coming from all different places. Um, let's see, location. Oh, you alternate between London and New York during the core. And we do provide hotel accommodations in those first three terms. That's included in your tuition. Transportation is not though, you would have to cover that cost. I mentioned the faculty travel with you, so you have great access to them. And it's, it's really, it's sort of the best of both worlds. It, it's an immersive program that lets you have that full-time student experience without interrupting your career. So here, Ashley and Yahida, I would love if um, maybe you could talk about, one of you tell me about your learning team, the diversity, who's on your team? And if the other one could talk about how you organized working together in between classes, and people always wanna know how much time you're spending on homework outside the class. So if you could touch on that. I can go first this time, Yahida, since you went first last. Um, so within my learning team, I had folks from all over the world. And so I had an individual, um, from uh, the Middle East, uh, somebody from Africa, uh, uh, somebody that was living in London, and then two of us that were in New York together. So really diverse. And the other New Yorker was actually originally from Germany. We had a variety of different industries in the space and different folks in different occupations, ranging from finance to insurance. I'm in tech, as mentioned, as well as um, data infrastructure. And so really a vast group uh, with very different strengths that they really brought to the table, which is really exciting to actually be able to work across and against. We had people who had leadership jobs before and those that hadn't, and those that had led teams and those who had not. And so really creating the opportunities for individuals to flex and try new things in different spaces in a safe, almost like sandbox was really exciting for individuals. We're all like amazing at our jobs. And so being able to come into a space and be a beginner was really fantastic to have the ability to ask really basic questions and really have that more beginning mindset and the chance and to fail in a safe space really helped us all not, not only grow within the coursework, but as professionals and personally as well. How we divided work was uh, it depended on the week, who had the most space in their day and in their life at that point in time. We're all busy, we all have jobs, they ebb and flow appropriately. And so it was a lot of proactive communication, letting each other know what our work life was like or our personal life was like at that point in time. And then all really banding together to make sure that we we're planning that out and that we we're able to achieve um, our goals of completing this work and making sure people were learning along the way. So really, uh, carrying each other and supporting each other as we went through this. How much time? Depended. Uh, and so things like financial accounting is a ton of work. I will say that now, like you, you need to make sure that you're making this space. Even people that were in accounting, like it's just a lot 
Uh, it's a lot of detail. It's a lot of pieces. It's a lot of stuff like that. Leadership and organizational change. That's actually a lot of individual where you're doing reflections and really uh, growing yourself and working those pieces. And then you have other um, classes where it's not as heavy. And those are the moments where you can make sure that you're refining and becoming an expert in the space. So it really varies. I know that's not the answer people want because it's not like a very good answer, but I would say that with your learning team in place, they're really there to help you to get through the heavy times. And then the basically the exchange is that you help them through the through their heavy times as well. Yeah, Hyde, is there anything you'd add to that or uh, any additional insights you have? I think little to add you did well on summarizing. Um, I think one of the, the biggest pieces for me was, or that I liked and the difficult parts as well, was the different time zones. Um, because everyone, at least, yeah, I actually had the same experience, but in my group, I have people from Dubai, the US, um, people that were in the current, in Romania, I was in Chile at that point. And so trying to find that space where everyone can be present um, uh, was important, but it, and I think that we went from very structured to have agendas and then quickly just became a bit more of a relationship and um, you, you have each other's back. And so, when someone is uh, is uh, going through a tough period um, at work and needs needs a bit more space, everyone is in there. Um, I will say that the 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 thing that helped us was agreeing at the beginning um, what was the, our intention as a group. If it was to get excellent grades, or if it was to learn from each other, or if it was to I don't know <laughs> just complete the tasks. Um, in our case, it was um, not allowing each of our expertise to become um, the majority of the of the tasks that we take. So in that way, everyone learned. Um, it obviously made it a little bit difficult, uh, especially when there's crunch times. But but I think it worked. Um, yeah, because you you're working with experts from biggest companies, so they can do the the assignment without much interaction. <laughs> so yeah, I think that yeah, you know, that's that would add. great. Thank you. That is sort of you're learning from each other and you're leaning on each other and helping each other get through. Now, this is sort of a, a close up look of uh, a core class week schedule. This is an actual schedule uh, from last June. And you can see here, well, maybe you can't see, but what the way it's structured is you're taking four core courses in every block week. So you can see, um, you know, the same class does not meet at the same time, uh, 8.30 to 7.30 at night, uh, American time. It's a full day. Uh, the week usually consists of six to seven days, but you're also gonna have to factor in travel time on either end. So that's the length of time to expect uh, roughly each month. Meals are provided, breakfast, lunch, afternoon snack, lots of coffee, lots of tea. But there are also speaker events planned, social events. Uh, there's an optional day prior to classes where the Career Management Center is available to work with students, answer questions. Um, students schedule social events on their own as well as those that the school uh, uh, plans. Basically, the message here is it is a full day, a full week, so it's really helpful if you're going to be applying, if you're hoping to start this program, to start having conversations with your employer and your team now to manage expectations. Because during class week, you know, there's always, there's flexibility if you need to take a call, do an email, whatever the professors do understand. But as much as you can carve out that time for yourself to be able to focus on the program, um, it, it's good to start those managing those expectations now. Um, if you could, uh, Yahida and Ashley, tell us what does a block week actually feel like, both logistically and in terms of the sense of community? What is it like to spend these six or seven days all together in London or New York? Maybe I'll cover the trip part. Um, I was I started the the ambassador site in Chile, so. The commuting to school was uh, was long. Um, yeah, so I think a big part of um, of just starting the program is preparing everyone around you. That is not only the 
seven or seven and a half days. So it will be a, around like the nine days of going and, and coming back. Um, but then once they're there, um, I think it's just full on days. The classes start very early, you finish the, in the afternoon and you have readings to do, homeworks to do. Um, so it's not much sleep. And also <laughs> I think uh, uh, everyone just wants to meet each other and get to know each other. And and it's such a, a sense of um, this community and um, almost going back to uni that it, it's, it's, uh, it's tiring. Um, it's a few hours of sleep, uh, but it's, it's, it's a very, very fun time. Uh, yeah. Ash. Hence all the coffee and tea. Yes, for sure. Uh, it's definitely full on. And so I live in New York and uh, I've talked to some of the other New Yorkers and originally we all didn't necessarily see the value in staying in the hotel, which quickly changed because there's just, it's seriously a very intense experience. And when you're in the block week, you're fully in that space and it's a very different context than your everyday life. And so even if you were to go home, which some people tried to do, it doesn't really make a lot of sense because of you being in this different space and different time and really being with these new folks and really building those relationships. It's I, the only way I could describe it is like full on, like you're spending all your time with these individuals, you're with them in the morning, you're with them at lunch, you're with them for dinner, you're doing after class activities with them, you, whether that's going to Yankees games or Moulin Rouge or actually just sitting in a room at CBS campus or at LBS campus, like working through case studies, you're always with these individuals and having those moments of both like planned fun that happen in this program, as well as the organic fun that occurs just through these different cracks in the schedule, really create amazing relationships and lasting moments that will change who you are and change those around you. Thank you. Okay, so core courses. Um, just to sort of summarize, during the core, you're going to have three class weeks each term, and they're taught in six or seven day blocks. Uh, the location of study alternates between London and New York. For instance, that first summer term, May, you're in London, June, you're in New York. July, you can stay home. Uh, August, you're in London. So three weeks during each term. Hotel accommodations are provided during the poor, and that's included in your tuition, but transportation is not. Um, and let's see, I think that's all we need to talk about here. Now, electives, once you get to those final two terms, the structure of the program changes. The schedule becomes a lot more flexible and you're gonna broaden your network beyond your immediate cohort. Uh, because you can choose to take all your classes in one location that's most convenient, or you can continue to go back and forth, study at different campuses. If you live near Columbia or live near LBS, you have the option of taking classes in other time formats, like our weekend classes or evening classes. Um, but if you do continue to follow the block week format, it's going to work a little differently. Unlike the core, when you're taking four different classes and you're rotating throughout the weeks, during the electives, um, if you're doing block weeks, you're going to spend the entire week taking just one class, which is then completed at the end of that week. So a little bit different. And um, this is just a snapshot, but there are, over, there are over 300 electives you can choose at Columbia alone, plus what's offered at London Business School. So it's a huge variety. And we don't have majors or concentrations. So you're completely free to choose whatever electives interest you and are relevant to your, your goals. So just to summarize the difference between core and elective terms, um, core, Accommodations are included. You're in those fixed study groups, those learning teams. Uh, you're with the same, you're assigned to faculty and they're traveling with you. During electives, the last two terms, you're gonna design your own schedule. You're gonna choose the locations where you study and um, you are required to do, that's when you would do the international seminar. And um, 
the reason we don't provide accommodations in the final two terms is because you're all in different places at different times. So you would be organizing your own accommodations at that point. And that is really those final two terms is when you get to meet students from other cohorts, other programs, it really hugely broadens your, um, your experience of the program. Um, yeah, Haida, can you tell me about, I hate to say favorite, but um, an elective class or a professor that really stood out for you or is standing out for you? Sure. Um... I think because um, at the end of the program, I have more than a couple of favorites. That's um, <laughs> but I think one of my earliest favorites was um, Paul Ingram. He's the, he was the professor of yeah, leadership and of organizational change. Um, I think that I was expecting a softer course and he had a lot of technical um, things that were taught. And that's actually one of the reasons why I took a couple of decisions last year, um, personal decisions. So I really, um, really remember him. Um, in the electives, one that I loved was negotiations. I, I took it in LBS and I think I took it in, in CBS and we both love it. Uh, it was just so much fun, but um, very active, really uh, practical and useful. So yeah, that was my, Professor Laura it, in LBS. Um, I think those are the biggest ones for me. Yeah, negotiations is not a core, but almost everyone takes it. it it's so practical and helpful and fun. Um, Ashley, how about a couple of questions I have for you. Where did you take your electives um, and how did you choose them? Did you stay in New York? Did you go back and forth? And um, Something I didn't mention, but which is really unique here, is our executives in residence program. So if you could talk about how you chose your electives and the execs in residence, that would be great. Great. I'll do my best. I'm like drip scribbling down notes to make sure I don't miss anything as we go. <laughs> uh, electives. Uh, so I would say there's a couple different ways generally people have thought about electives. One is I want to sharpen my current tools that I have, and the other is I want to expand my toolkit. I have fallen much more into the expand my toolkit space, and so I really focused on identifying my own gaps that I had with my knowledge and academic background, and then really targeting classes in that space. I will say I also always gave myself what I like to refer to as, cup, as a cupcake class, which is like a class that I knew that I would be exceptional at. Uh, just because it does hurt your ego after a while, just to be like repeatedly terrible <laughs> at stuff. Uh, so I would always make sure to bring myself either a strategy class or an economics class, because those kind of are my forte. Uh, and then for me, I did not go to London very much during the core. We were in a COVID space. And so for us, we had a little bit different of a schedule in that. And so I felt like I had missed out a bit on having that travel experience. And so I have actually taken this summer and have been predominantly traveling to London this summer where I've been blocking two block weeks together. So I'll go, I'll come home for two weeks and then I'll go to London for two weeks. And then I, I come home for two weeks. I also did test out a different schedule. And so I did test out doing a night class every week just to see how that would fit for me after going through the block classes. I ultimately decided that blocks were easier for me personally. And so the rest of my electives has fallen into that schedule. As it relates to uh, executives in residence, they're called EIR in case you see anything of that space. I think that they're completely underutilized and everybody needs to take advantage of them as much as possible. These are folks that are industry executives, they're experts in their different spaces, and they give their time generously just to meet with individuals part of the Columbia community and talk to you about whatever you want to talk about. And so I've met with um, somebody who was an exec, Pauline Brown, who was an executive within luxury goods. I've met with somebody who is an executive within gas and energies, different individuals. And at first I felt like I would not get a lot of value from them because I come from tech, I plan to stay in tech, but having somebody that can bring you a different perspective and a fresh take 
honest space and help coach you through your narrative and how you present yourself and making sure your resume is easy to understand in these different pieces is completely invaluable. And a it is these are common pitfalls you would fall into if you didn't necessarily have access to those people. I've also spoken to others who have activated the executive in residence to engage in their networks where they might be trying to make a pivot in their career, they might be seeking to get into Nike, and then uh, they found an executive in resident who's connected to a board member at Nike. They're also available and able to do those types of connections for you, strictly due to the fact that we're all part of this amazing Columbia community. Yeah, take advantage of the access. Not everyone does, so that's great advice. Um, this is a highlight of the program, I think. Um, all students are required to do at least one international assignment or seminar. Um, this is roughly one week in length where you travel to another location and um, there's class time. You're accompanied by a faculty member who's an expert in a specific topic that's relevant to that area. Uh, there's class time, corporate visits, local guest speakers, and of course, lots of cultural and social activities. Um, you're not just with your cohort because you're choosing the, the place and topic that interests you. So you're going to meet and bond with students from our EMBA programs across both schools. We usually have um, between six and eight options. A couple of examples. Uh, in Cape Town, it's a focus on entrepreneurship, both large and small scale. In Shanghai, it's a focus on doing business in China. And Munich, is uh, it focuses on experience branding and takes place during Oktoberfest. Now, during the international seminar, accommodations are provided, and that is including your tuition. You're responsible for the cost of your flights. Um, a second international seminar is optional. There is an additional fee for that, about $4,000. Um, COVID, you know, travel restrictions canceled 2020 and 2021 trips, but uh, we have started up again. And um, hopefully by the time anyone is uh, who's watching this webinar comes to join the class, this will take place in your second year. So, you know, fingers crossed, everything's back to normal at that point. Um, Ashley and Haida, have you gone on an international seminar or have you signed up for one? What are your, what's happening with that? We have signed up. We have not gone yet. I'll be going to Buenos Aires focused on emerging markets. Yahida, I believe, is joining me on that adventure. So that's yeah. end of September, early October. Excellent. Well, I want to hear back. I'll invite you back later to, so you can talk about that some more. Um, career management, obviously, one of the reasons you're thinking of doing an MBA at all is to invest in your career, and you have access to the career management teams at both schools. Um, within Columbia's CMC, Career Management Center, we have a team of people who work specifically with EMBA because the needs in your career development are going to be different than uh, those of our full-time students. I would say in general, EMBAs are focused more on long-term career advancement rather than a big 180 degree career change. Um, and it's not really designed for those huge changes of both industry and function. This kind of change can be difficult in EMBA because you're working full time and you don't have the opportunity to do an internship. But that being said, we do see a lot of people pivot, make unexpected changes. They're exposed to new ideas, new people, and a lot of opportunities come your way, um, some from your classmates who can be one of your best resources, but also through the support of the professionals in the career management offices. Um, you'll have access to a career advisor who can, even if you're not thinking of changing jobs right then, they can help you reflect on your, your long-term plans and identify tangible steps forward. Um, they offer lots of workshops, resources to help you define and hone your personal brand and, and just lay the foundation for your professional advancement. I, I know, Yahida, you switched. You're still in the program and you switched jobs. Can you talk a little bit about um, what that process was like? I don't know if you utilized um, career management resources at all for that. Um, sure. Like I, I changed. Um early in the program. It was uh, um, during my first 
the second term. Um, I didn't use the, the career management to do that change, but I, I did I did came to that conclusion because of the EMBA. Um, as I said before, Paul Ingram's class was important to me. Um, the second part was the coaching sessions that we had uh, as part of the, the career management um, piece. Um, they just make you realize of things that you haven't thought about. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also just meeting different people. And just uh, for me, it was the realization that the, the, the world is bigger, even though I had work in, um, in different parts. I, it's, just, it's just different, the, the experience of, of engaging with different people from different backgrounds. And um, yeah, and it, it, that was one of the reasons. Um, how, how it work, it obviously is a, it's a bit difficult, but all the, the, the surrounding supporting mechanisms from the school had made it a lot easier. Um, this move, like coming into a different country has always been difficult, uh, just getting all the, all the people around, but just coming to London, it's, it's been super easy. Uh, there's the alumni clubs, uh, so there's people already, um, the, the working in, in in executive roles that can help you, um, the the people that are already living here from your for from the EMBA, um, we have these uh, these sessions not only when you requested it but they are also part of the for the schedule so you you don't even need to ask for it they they come to you um, so I think that's that's absolutely helped the transition um, for me this has been one of the smoothest that I've had. Um, that's great. Thank you. Um, and, you know, they provide all the things you would expect, CV review, networking skills, mock interviews, they help you with salary negotiations. And um, maybe most importantly, they can help you uh, navigate our alumni database to make uh, those all important connections. So, um, all right, we will just talk a little bit about who's in the class. This is the most recent class that entered and a um, wide variety of uh, backgrounds. Now, you know, no surprise, our, our schools are located in financial capitals, so we attract a lot of candidates with finance backgrounds. Usually about a third of the class is from some aspect of finance, but, you know, more than 60% are from a wide variety of other industries as well. Ashley, Yahida, you can take a break for a few minutes because I'm going to talk about the application process and um, take a break, but don't go away. Okay, um, let's see the admissions process, what we're looking for. This here is a profile of our most recent entering class. So you can get a general sense of who came in. Now, when you're applying and we're looking at your applications, the first thing that's an absolute requirement is full-time employment. This is an executive MBA program. You're expected to be working throughout the program. Uh, sometimes people wonder if, if they are freelance consultants or entrepreneurs, if that counts as full-time employment. Yes, of course it does. And because this is a global program, we really are looking for people who have transnational roles, or if they don't currently have that, they have ambitions in that direction. Have you already worked across borders? Maybe your firm is expanding internationally and you're looking to gain a more global network and mindset to prepare for moving upward in that expanded um, environment. This international focus is what really differentiates EMBA Global from our other EMBA programs. We do expect candidates to have management experience, but we have a pretty broad definition of that. It, it might mean managing teams of people, but it can also mean managing a budget or processes or projects. But we do look for people who have demonstrated leadership, had some sort of decision-making role and upward career growth. Um, importantly, uh, can you do this program? Is the program's block week format and the travel schedule feasible for you? So have those discussions with your employers early. We do require a time sponsorship letter from your company affirming that they support your taking the time off to do this. But also, really important, discuss this with your partner, your family, your friends, because you're really going to need their buy-in and support as well. And then, you know, self-reflection. 
this is hard to do. It's challenging. It takes a big commitment on your part. So how motivated are you to do this? It's an amazing experience. Everyone who does it tells me that. Um, but you need to really want this because it's your own enthusiasm and the support and enthusiasm of your classmates that's going to help you get through. And then finally, you do need to be fluent in English because all classes are conducted in English. We don't require other languages, though a lot of our and the global students do speak several. Now, um, the admissions process itself, it's a holistic process. We want to get to know you professionally, academically, personally. So that means we have no minimum required scores, no quotas, no cutoffs, no required number of years of experience. Um, it's a rigorous program. So we do want to feel confident you can manage the academics. But when we're looking at applications, what we emphasize most in evaluating candidates is professional achievement. We look for substantial work experience that's international in nature. Something important to understand about our process is that it's rolling. So what that means is as applications come in, we're reviewing them right away and we're filling the class as we go. So within that kind of scenario, it's really to your advantage to apply earlier in the cycle rather than later. Because if you wait till the end, we don't have a lot of spots left and it becomes more competitive. Uh, there are three essays. The first one is, why do you want to do this program? How is it going to help you achieve your goals? So there we want to hear about your career goals. Why a specifically global program makes sense for you? What specific resources at each school do you plan to leverage? Essay two, we ask you to tell us about a challenge you faced and how you handled it. And then essay three, um, the question is, how do you embody a global leader? And for that, we're really looking for um, an answer that's more on a personal level with a strong emphasis on your international background or your, your desires to expand your, your life internationally. We require two references. These should be professional, not academic, and one should be from your current supervisor. Other good choices are clients, uh, previous supervisors, um, someone who supervised you on a project, even if they're not your exact boss. If you're in a family business, not a blood relative, um, not mom or dad. And um, I would say with your recommenders, discuss the global focus. We want to hear from them about the impact you've made in your workplace and your career potential and why global makes sense for you. Then next, GMAT, GRE, or EA, the executive assessment. This is the part that most applicants get very anxious about. Um, we do require a test. We do not grant test waivers. Um, but as I said before, keep in mind that what we're looking at and weighing most heavily is work experience. We want to get a sense of your baseline academic strengths and weaknesses. We use this primarily in putting together the learning teams to make sure there's a balance of skills on each team. We accept all three of these tests. We have no preference, so take the one that you're most comfortable with. We don't have a preference for in-person tests versus online tests. Whatever works for you is fine with us. Um, these tests, once you take them, they're valid for five years. So if you've already taken one, great, you're done. If you have not taken a test and you're not quite sure which one to take, I would encourage you to look into the executive assessment, the EA, just because it's just easier to fit into your life. Um, it is designed specifically for EMBA. It focuses on integrative reasoning, critical thinking, problem solving, things you're already doing every day. Uh, there's no geometry. There's no writing portion. It's only 90 minutes instead of four hours. And it's designed to be taken with minimal preparation. Most successful applicants tell us they spent between 25, 30 hours prepping, whereas the GMAT can take months and months of prep. So I'm telling you that not because we prefer it. I just think it's probably the least burdensome test. And I want to make sure you're aware of it. Um, if you want to learn more, go to GMAC, G-M-A-C dot com slash EA for details and test prep materials. We don't have a minimum required score, but if you're looking for guidance, we tell people to aim for a score of 600 or higher if you're taking the GMAT or for a score of 
If you're taking the executive assessment, somewhere in the high 140s to mid 150s. And if you take the GRE, just um, Google GRE convert to GMAT and see if it is roughly around 600. Okay, TOEFL IELTS. If English is not your native language and you did not earn a degree from a school in which English was the language of instruction, you will need to take a TOEFL or IELTS as part of your application. Uh, there's one exception though. If you have lived or worked in an English speaking country for at least two years, there's no need for an English skills test. Now, company sponsorship. I mentioned that before. We need a letter from your employer uh, saying that they support the idea of you leaving for one week each month, basically confirming their support for time sponsorship. We don't have the actual dates yet for next year's class week, uh, but once we get them, we'll post that timetable on our website. It's really helpful to have the actual dates, to have those discussions with your employer. And I wanna emphasize what we're talking about here is time sponsorship. We don't require financial sponsorship, but if you can obtain it, that would be great for you. Um, it's not a requirement for admission, but if you go on our website to the fees page, there's a sample business case that can help you guide that conversation with your employer. You have to ask them for time sponsorship anyway. So uh, people have been surprised sometimes that their companies were willing to give partial if not full sponsorship. So it's always worth trying. Uh, next, transcripts. We will need to receive official transcripts from any degree granting program you've completed. And then finally, interview. Once your application has come in, it's complete. We've got the recommendations, everything's there. Uh, you will hear from us within four to six weeks as to whether you're being invited to interview. Everyone that we're considering admitting gets interviewed. Uh, interviews take place virtually. They're done by a member of the admissions team. And depending on where you are based, your location, one of the schools is going to take the lead on processing your application and will conduct the interview. So for Columbia Business School, we cover residents of North and South America, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, the Caribbean. And London Business School covers uh, the territories of Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. So those are the schools you'll be working with if you apply. But we make the admissions decisions jointly. Both schools are going to read all the applications and the interview reports, and we get together on a weekly Zoom call to discuss this and make these decisions. Once the interview takes place, you will receive your decision within two weeks. Uh, fees and financial aid. Um, it is, as I mentioned before, and it's listed on our website, the cost for people who will be entering in May 2023 is a total of $218,079. Now, this is all inclusive. It includes your tuition, uh, your books, which are mailed to your home or office. Uh, a lot of your study materials are virtual. Uh, it covers tutoring in the quantitative core classes. It covers accommodations during the core and the international seminar. It also covers all those meals and snacks and coffee and tea, um, but it does not cover flights. And it does not cover accommodations during the final two terms when you're doing electives. So consider that in your planning. We do have need-based financial aid available in the form of loans. So um, the financial aid office of the school that's processing your application will be happy to offer guidance in the loan application process. You'll find their contact info on our website. Most of our students cover the cost of the program through a combination of loans, personal savings, and full or partial employer support. And again, I would really encourage you to talk to your employer about that possibility. On the fees page of our website, there's that business case that might help you with that conversation. So next steps. This webinar is great first step. I hope you've gotten a lot of information here, but other ways to learn and move forward, you can send in your CV for review. Um, there on the screen, you'll see the, the web address to send it to and uh, start now developing that business case to prepare for the time sponsorship discussion with your employer. And watch our events page where you signed up for this. Uh, we will be posting more opportunities for campus visits and um, other events. And really, I would encourage you to now look into your test options, start prepping. That's the thing that people tend to think of as the biggest hurdle. 
get that done with, and then you can focus on um, you know, your essays, the things that are really more important. Um, also listed here are the deadlines for May 2023 entry. These earlier dates are really, they're just goalposts to help set your sights on a specific date and motivate you. Now keep in mind, we have a rolling admissions process. We're filling the class as we go, so applying earlier in the cycle is always to your advantage. Applications are open. They're online now. You can submit any time between now and March 7th, 2023, but please don't wait for the final deadline. Get your application ahead of the crowd. And, ah, okay. Here's the contact info for both schools admissions teams listed by the regions that we cover. If you have any additional questions afterwards that we didn't get to, please feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to, um, to engage with you and, and answer all your questions. And now um, we have time. Yeah, we have a little bit of time. Isaac, are there any questions that have come in for our panelists or for admissions? Yes, there are a few questions, um, more logistical, but I will I will direct them to you, Susan, um, and, and maybe some of the panelists as well. So we have one question about the hotel and how far it is from the LBS campus. And then relatedly, uh, another attendee asked about whether the accommodations at the hotel um, you know, if each student received a separate room or if students were rooming together. <laughs> so perhaps um, someone would uh, like to chime in and talk about. Yeah, those are great questions. Um, students, I throw those to you. Uh, the LBS Hotel is super close to campus. It's walkable. So um, that one's walkable. The New York Hotel you would uh, is a train. So be aware of that one, uh, which just find a New Yorker, they'll be able to help you. It's super easy. It's like $2, I think, to jump on the train. So it's not very expensive. Uh, you get your own room. So just be like, uh, I'm too old to share a room. I'm too old <laughs> roommates. So uh, that would have been a deal breaker for me personally. So uh, I would assume the person asking that question is in a similar space. You will get your own room. We'll say it is common for you to like for a bunch of you to hang out in a room together because randomly somebody will get like a suite somehow. So you all go there to do homework together, but we'll have your own bed to sleep in and to have your clothes everywhere within your room. <laughs> your own shower, your own bathroom, all those things. That's great. What else? Great. Uh, we have another question um, about time. So like how many weeks times would students be required to travel to New York and London during the core period? Oh gosh. Uh, that down somewhere. Well, it's, you know, it's roughly half and half and there are what, 11 uh, core courses. So I'm not sure I think like six in one place and five in the other. Do either of you have any more to insight to share? Well, it's like it's a it's a week of travel every month from May till January. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, Hold on. I actually do have it here. Um, let's in May you go to London. In June you go to New York. In August you go to London. September New York. October New York. December London. January London. February New York. So one, two, three, four. I was four New York and one, two, three, four, about five London. And then you are also taking some electives in that third term and you choose the location for that. So that's really up to you where you're spending your time during the electives. Wonderful. And then we may have covered this, but just to go back to the question of financial aid, um, someone asked, are there scholarship resources that alumni have used? Um, unfortunately, there have been a few years when the school has been able to offer small scholarships. Usually it was somewhere between 20 and 30,000 to a very limited number of applicants that really depended on funding for that year. Uh, there were not scholarships last year. I'm told there will not be scholarships for students entering in 2023. So I'm afraid, um, I wish that were not the answer, but at least I wanna give you definitive information. So no, no scholarships. Um, 
basically we offer additional we offer um, assistance in the loan application process you can also you know search on your own for external scholarships um i'm not aware i personally don't have information to share about that and really i would encourage you to at least try to get some a lot of our students get at least partial uh, sponsorship from their company financially, so it never hurts to ask the question. Great. Um, I think that's it. Um, we do have a question from a Columbia employee, but I can connect with you, Michelle, if you're listening. Um, <laughs> we can connect offline about your questions. Okay, well, I just want to, I want to thank Haida and Ashley. It's so nice to see you both. I'm so glad you're both having a great time in the program. Um, I learned a lot. I hope everyone listening did. It's so helpful to have you here. And thanks to all of you who joined us. Please do feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we look forward to seeing your applications and uh, we want to serve as a resource as you go through the application process. So have a great rest of your day or evening, wherever you are. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, Isaac. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Bye, Susan. <laughs>